So what do I do? As illustrator of Pippi Goes Aboard, one of my tasks is to set the scene by taking Astrid Lindgren's descriptions of character, place and events and translate them into images. I'm also seeking to go beyond what is written and search for the meaning in the text to illustrate the energy, the emotion and the atmosphere contained in the story. I work with typography and words and the illustrator's pictures so that together they can be printed and made into a book. I'm part technician dealing with the publisher and the printer's requirements and part creative helping the illustrator realise their vision of the book as best I can. The first thing I do is to immerse myself in the world the writer, in this case Astrid Lindgren, has created. I'm noting the details and descriptions, looking for the meaning within the words, reading them over and over until they're personal to me. Then I'm making sketches and thumbnails of as many ideas I can come up with, things I think I might want to illustrate or might serve the story. I read the text uh, to be as familiar with the story as I can be. And then after speaking with Lauren, I look at the physical makeup of the book, like the type of paper, the way we could print it, and the overall feel of the product. Perhaps most importantly, the size and number of pages need to be estimated. The publisher's budget has a huge effect on all of these things. I calculate the number of pages needed by first designing the basic look of the typography. This tells us how many pages we need to print only the words and then I can estimate a reasonable page count for the entire book to include Lauren's illustrations. I can now tell Lauren how many blank pages are available for her illustrations but it's up to her to decide how to use them. I just try to get her this information as soon as possible as it has a big impact on how she makes her illustrations. What I know now is a rough idea of how many pages I have for illustration throughout the book and per chapter. And I can begin to sift through my ideas and, and, and figure out which will work. It's now that my collaboration begins with the designer and I send David all my various rough ideas and he drops them into the text and we discuss which illustrations will tell the story the best and which will bring the most energy to the text. After meeting and discussing Lauren's initial ideas for the book, I can take her little idea sketches and place them throughout the 208 pages and amongst the type. This two-dimensional layout becomes a storyboard and we can now see how specific picture ideas begin to affect the positioning of the initial typesetting. It's like a bird's eye view of the entire book on a single sheet of paper. Lauren can see how her illustrations would be spread throughout the book and uh, decide if the balance feels right f from an aesthetic point of view. For example, it doesn't work if all the uh, pictures are in the first two chapters or if there's only one chapter without illustrations in it. Unless there's a really good reason for this. It's at this point we can discuss all of these types of things. What happens next? There's a lot of back and forth, sending ideas, looking at alternatives, and discussing practical things, which might be, for instance, uh, to show a word hooked on a safety pin. So I need to know if this will work within the design. I might want to devote one page to a single illustration free from words and David has to figure out 
if the text breaks at the right point to allow for this. Sometimes an idea has to be dropped because we don't have the space for it. Often one finds that there's an illustration which needs to be included because it brings clarity to the story. Uh, now we look at each illustration in detail and find ways of fitting all the illustration ideas throughout the type. It's not as easy as it sounds. When the type is integrated with pictures to make the words fall on a page where we need them, the words before and after them must fall in a way that allows that. Therefore, those words affect where other pictures may be or how they may integrate with other illustrations. It's like a daisy chain from beginning to end where changing one thing affects another further on down the chain. So now what? I should say that I absolutely never rough out the entire book before I begin illustrating. I'm too impatient for one thing and, and uh, for another I need to know how the artwork is actually going to look before I can be sure that it will work. Very often I think I've got it all figured out but when I review it as a whole and discuss it with the designer I realise I need to think again. Well once we've organised the storyboard and the typesetting is in the right place Lauren knows what space her pictures must fill. I can print out the layout on pieces of paper at this stage and she uses these uh, to plan her next step, which is making the final illustrations. I'm absolutely sure that's how it should be done.